Welcome to the first lesson of FamWi. So in this lesson, we're gonna be talking all about the female anatomy. I promise it won't be too long. It's just a quick overview. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm sure you've seen these images in a textbook or like during your health class. We have everything labeled here. So there's the vagina, which leads to your cervix, that leads to your uterus, and then it leads to your fallopian tube and your ovary. So you do have two fallopian tubes and two ovaries. On the image on the right, you can see just a side profile to get a better idea of where everything is. Now we're just gonna go in more of like a deep dive on each of these organs. So first you can see the little pink blobs there. Those are your ovaries. So these are a pair of reproductive glands that are positioned on either side of your uterus. They are supported by ligaments and these serve as the reservoirs for all your eggs and they store about one to two million from birth. So each egg is contained within a sac called a follicle and then during ovulation we typically release one egg from a mature follicle and we do this about 500 times over a lifetime. So the ovaries play a super important role in producing our primary sex hormones, estrogen and progesterone. The two long narrow tubes you see there are called the fallopian tubes. These are connected to the upper part of your uterus and they serve as a passageway to transport a mature egg or a fertilized egg from the ovary to the uterus. So once you've ovulated, the egg can hang out in the fallopian tube for up to 24 hours. And if a sperm meets it, it can fertilize it. So fertilization takes place in the fallopian tube, not the uterus. So this egg is then carried through the tube by the muscular contractions and the movement of cilia, which are little like finger-like things that like push it through the tube. And although it looks like the fallopian tubes are attached to your ovaries, they're actually not. They kind of just hang out there. Once your ovary has released that egg, the fallopian tube sweeps it up. Here we have the uterus and the endometrium. So your uterus is a small hollow muscular organ where the fertilized egg implants. And as a pregnancy continues, it expands many, many times its size. The endometrium is the lining of the uterus, which you shed during your period, and it's a mucous membrane which develops during your cycle in response to the hormones, estrogen, and progesterone. So this will make a nice cushiony area just in case a fertilized egg comes and wants to implant there. And if you did not get pregnant that cycle, then your hormones will drop and you will shed that lining as your period. This little darker pink part on the bottom of the uterus is called your cervix. So that's the lower part of the uterus that opens into the vagina. It contains cervical crypt which produces mucus in response to hormones, estrogen, and progesterone. We'll get more into that later. And then this helps to hinder or facilitate sperm too. This lower part here is your vagina and it's actually not on the outside. It's the inner muscular canal that goes from the cervix to the vaginal opening. So your vagina has its own microbiome as well. And it also has an acidic pH to help protect itself from foreign substances and bacteria. And without cervical mucus, sperm actually can't survive. The image on the left gives you another visual. So you have your urethra there, the vagina, and then your anus. And the perineum is not labeled, but the perineum is between the vagina and the anus. And then you also have your clitoris at the top as well. So if you look to the right image, that brown blob there, that's the bladder and it's in front of the uterus. And then you have your urethra down there as well. So that's the tube that you actually urinate out of. So a woman's urethra is shorter than a man's and it's also located closer to the anus. This can cause an increase in the frequency of UTI infections compared to men and then also your microbiome and hormone changes can influence this as well and that is it for this lesson i promise you it'd be quick so i just wanted you to have a better overview of what i'm talking about when i'm saying the ovaries or the uterus or the fallopian tubes and you can look back at this lesson anytime if you want a little reminder in the next section we're gonna be jumping right into covering the hormones and the body